here so we can share with the rest of the world what we're doing at Open Source Ecology with a core development team. So here we go. First thing is, um, so last week, just to review what, what we've been doing, last week we talked about the process of how we collaborate. And um, the idea is to build a team, and that's a challenge, so we're, we're just basically starting. But here, look at the, let me share my screen here and show you where we are with numbers. So here's screen share. Share that. Okay. Look at this. Now this graph. Oh, actually. This is our graph of OSE developers. Look at that. Starting pretty much 131. Um, 131 being uh, starting basically February. But we started with one brave player, not counting myself. That's Emmanuel. Moved up to two. Uh, after a couple of weeks from so on week three we were up to three people so almost one person per week growing but this is kind of we want to track this because um, as the project grows we want to have real data on how a team is built and, and and what it takes to put a team together so I'm tracking this uh, by the recruiting process as far as the OSC stats here this is the so I'm keeping the spreadsheet, but also look at this development hours. Um, from the first day was about 15 hours. Second, on, at the second week it was about uh, 24 hours. It dropped last week, but that drop is not a drop. It's I don't think people have been logging. So here is an invitation, and please take a second right now. Go to the um, what's it called? It's called volunteer hours timesheet go to timesheet put in your hours from last week so so i'm not this is real data right so i'm not putting any fake numbers this what happens on this spreadsheet here and this graph is what's recorded on the spreadsheet so everyone has to log that helps us get data and basically how far we're growing and, and how how everything is moving along because <clears throat> essentially if you can't measure it you can't improve it so that's the idea and now we have our one working team but in the future as we have a number of working teams uh, then we can get very specific on what our capacity is to grow as a team which is um, indispensable if we want to talk about a rigorous program I mean if the ambitions are to develop a replicable method of how people can develop products we have to back it up with some data so please uh, take a second right now to put in your your data um, from last week I, I put that in hey Richard um, yeah so please do that let me see if uh, I'm gonna go to the show you the page the page on the wiki is called Um, timesheet and I, I can see who's basically a simple timesheet your name what you worked on and how many hours you put in so I can click on results and show that okay yeah can you guys do that right now Emmanuel, can you do that right now? I don't see you having done that. Richard, Jonathan, and Emmanuel, if you can fill that in for whatever you did regarding the the team page. Now that that statistic there is just on the the development team project. Um, this slide okay that's that I need to fix the graph there this does not include other projects meaning if there's anything else going on like an open building institute or whatever this is just what the development team is working on nothing else and why uh, because we want to 
get clear information on how the development team itself is doing as opposed to like okay there's all kinds of work happening but we want to be very specific on what's what's happening exactly with the development team so we can scale that effort for the future so that does require as i point here that does require diligence in logging hours okay yeah 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 Um, no, I did not, like, for example, I worked about 10, 15 hours on the actual 3D printer work, but a lot of the other stuff I, I worked around HR, other things, so, but I think for the development team, I think we actually might want to simplify this, uh, the spreadsheet to say... I don't know, because it kind of gets, if we want to graph it and actually maintain it properly, I think we should keep it super simple. Um, I would say we revisit that. Yeah, let's do that right now as, as we're doing as development team members. I can edit that spreadsheet. Um, it's pages, volunteer timesheet. Yeah, I'll edit that because what we want to do is in one simple, yeah, I'm going to edit this and say, so first your name, what was the main task project you worked on? So you can put your hours, but then, no, I will say how many hours total did you work? Because it's, it's going to get kind of confusing. Like we, I mean, as far as the capacity we have right now, I mean, what how many total hours did you work work on the OSC dev team so like you can still say what's the main task you worked on um what no how about we do this what's Yeah, I mean, that's still relevant. We worked on a 3D printer. You can be specific, like, for example, the frame or whatever. But then how much time did you spend in total? And then the second question, which we don't necessarily grab. So, so the second question is going to capture all the different hours. But the third question, what other tasks did you work on? And no, I, I will say, please, please do a complete breakdown of, of what you worked on and how many hours. Please break down your work. Please break down your tasks and working hours on them so when we graph it we just graph point number two which is what's the total number of hours you worked and then you can get specific like what's you know break that down further into some details so um which is which i don't think has to be required the, the second the third question is not really required but the second question is uh, the first question, what what you worked on required, your name, that's required. Um, and the last task is basically ask you to break things down into more detail. So, yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, and this is the results spreadsheet that I'm showing you right now. Um, it's, sorry, internet's kind of slow here. I'm going to put that into the, just to show you. Okay, so, uh, volunteer, no. There's a page called OSC Statistics. So I'm keeping statistics on that page. Slow internet. So this is our dev team. I want to paste in this uh, dev team working hour, the total hours. Oh, sorry, it's slow. Okay, so that's the dev team numbers. And then I go back to the spreadsheet. Um, but here what I'm doing in that spreadsheet is I'm 
pretty much manually tracking this uh, here. It's not automatically updated. I basically go week by week and I look at the recruiting results so far, basically how many of our developers are on board right now and generate these graphs. And here I did not update this one, but basically that dip, as I said, was people not logging because it's actually going up. So just fill that. Now, as far as recruiting, so Richard's on a te team here as our interim HR generalist in training. Uh, we're hoping to to get an advisor basically from the TED network. I, I would like to actually get um, an advisor who can do 10 sessions with us and generate a lot of the processes that we need. But as far as the results so far on the, the recruiting, uh, we had about 20 applicants so far. So I'm going to show myself here. Um, we've get, had about 20 applicants so far. So far we have four people on a team. So that's like a 20% rate. Some people are in still doing their test or in progress. But um, uh, altogether the, the, the success rate is, is low, which is, which is okay. That's fine. But the idea is to get the numbers of recruits up and set up these processes like Richard and I are talking about. Um, get a pipeline of people and then uh, interviewing them and then automate some of those processes possibly like if we really want to grow the, the large numbers we get as efficient as we can on that so I mean we actually talked about setting up a call center even to to process applications uh, quickly up front so that we don't have to do the work if it's if it's affordable and low cost and it actually gets us real developers we can possibly look into that but right now we're we're just developing the protocols and everything so um, that's about all on a, on a organizational overhead. Uh, Jean Baptiste is another person who's applying. He was, he is our graphics lead. He mentioned that we should have a little uh, kind of a crash course once we get you on to get people on board. What I still owe you guys is uh, actually a, a welcome letter, and which includes this OSC badge. So actually, as, as you pass the free CAD, we, we got this we got these badges going on. So uh, open source ecology. FreeCAD certification, and here's going to be the year, um, the number of the person who actually, like the number, like number one, Emmanuel's number one here, he's got that unique uh, distinction there, but that way the badge itself is a uh, documentation piece, it shows how many developers have, have passed through the system, and then, you know, say we, you know, we're on 1,000, you know, 1,000 developers who who came through the program uh, and then we can compare that to how many are current and active and that tells you retention rates how many people are sticking around versus uh, popping in and then coming out so so that's once again good statistics now the other statistic that I'm gonna keep track of is uh, if you go to the wiki there's actually number if you go to the wiki anywhere there's special pages and on special pages, you have current wiki editors. So if you go down to that list, actually active users list. So I'm logging that as well. But basically, uh, uh, I counted like, so this is people who have done edits within the last 30 days and tells you how many edits. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so we got 18 people. Last week it was 16. So now we've got 18 so-called active contributors. Uh, to the wiki and the numbers vary anywhere from one edit in the last 30 days to 1081 edits by myself here I live on the wiki pretty much uh, last next one down from there is is Emmanuel with 93 here so he's quite active Richard has been quite active with 34 uh, James Wise with 24 edits and so forth so uh, James Wise, Dorkmo, for example, that's people who are just contributing at an ad hoc fashion. And there's um, some of the names we recognize, Polymidas, that's Emmanuel, Richard White, people from the core, core team who are um, recognized as active OSC developers. As far as the OSC badge and as, as well as a welcome letter, so I, I owe you guys that, a welcome letter which basically provides all the critical information like how to how to log your hours how to use the wiki and so forth just basically a welcome message including your CAD badge uh, where one thing I forgot to mention this this badge will also have some data like for example we'll put stars a star will represent every 
90-day iteration cycle that a person completes successfully. And for suc successful completion, you have to sh uh, meet your uh, requirement of development for, um, I would say, about, you can miss pretty much like two meetings uh, that to be in good standing, meaning that you you know every just about every week you've contributed if it's more than like two or so that you're missing meetings and continuity is not happening um, we might um, not give you the star um, but basically a, a, a high grade for the fact that you have been active and that you're con continuing an active in an active fashion as opposed to coming in and maybe you know showing up for six meetings and then failing to show up for the next six I mean that wouldn't cut it for for the star and we're hoping that people get multiple stars meaning that they continue through the 90 development cycles as, as much as possible as much as they can um, and last thing about this badge also is um, the score which I, in this round text here we can put some some other text and this badge is actually editable so we have that in in uh, in Inkscape I believe GIMP or Inkscape? I, for, I forget. I think it's GIMP. Um, no, it's no, it's Inkscape. That's vector vector graphics. Um, but upon being accepted, you can actually edit your badge, put in all your values. One one value that you put in there is actually your score on the FreeCAD exam. So so far we've had scores from like about seventy to a hundred, uh, or seventy, no more, like yeah, so, something. But but basically, passing grade is you get. I mean, we kind of have to refine a specific number, but I mean, obviously, if you if you upload the video and do the whole exercise, that's that's pretty much considered passing. But if you miss some of the steps, it might it might not be a hundred, it might be ninety or eighty or whatever, because there's a, there's a number of steps in there. So we want to have people grade themselves. So it's a little bit of gamification that you can say, "Hey, I'm number one. I got a hundred, and I'm <laughs> and so forth." So you can kind of brag about your brat badge to to people. And and it is um, this badge itself does have significant meaning in a sense that the exercise itself it's it's non-trivial. It's I mean, once you know how to do those basic things in FreeCAD, I mean, you're you're pretty. Um, I mean, you you can do a lot of tasks. You can do a lot of meaningful contributions to the program. So, okay. So with that said, that's kind of a little bit of overhead on um, on um, organizational stuff. Anything else to mention? Do you want to bring up anything, Richard, on an organization? Um, let's see. I don't really have anything new aside from what we talked about. I, I made some edits. That's nice to know the wiki. I went through that whole list of um, recruiting sites and just kind of some are actual like volunteer posting boards and then some aren't. Some are, are just sort of like references to other volunteer sites. Some are for nonprofits, but only you can only post like paid positions mm -hmm. or they require a subscription, like a, they require payment to post. So I just kind of weeded out the ones that are useful and the ones that aren't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's kind of the only thing I've done. Uh, that's, I did that yesterday. So now that we know which ones are useful, we can kind of focus on those right now. And, yeah. You know, post um, like you said the, for the post for the developers now that we've made all the yeah. HR posts. Right. So we posted the HR human resources generalist on several websites. Now we're going to do the posting specifically asking for OSC developers, which is um, good. And one one thing to point out. I emailed the entire group of design sprinters, and from that list, um, one person only has responded in any way. So, out of about 400 people, what basically what that what does that mean? I mean, we're asking for a pretty significant commitment on an OSC dev team with the 10 hours per week, but that means that a lot of the people who were on the design sprints, which are the ad hoc, um, kind of like uh, you put in a few hours every week, people kind of didn't want to upgrade from that to the more deep commitment well that's okay but it shows that there's definite different markets of people so-called people who do have the time and people who kind of just come in and out a little bit but it's clear that if you if we focus on on the people who can make a significant commitment of course that would get you more results but it's harder to get as you see like like not a single person from the design sprints list is yet on the official development team right now though that probably will change in the future so yeah just that note yeah so we're posting the osc developer announcement and 
going to start making noise and as we get the printer ready for prime time we can do much better so let's let's get right to the printer uh, let's show you some things here so uh, I do have the frames uh, so those are the frames that's uh, 10 gauge steel so I'm pretty much this week uh, if we go to the critical path let me show you that uh, and share my screen um, D3D so on a D3D page there's a critical path and I'll share my screen on that but let's let's kind of get the whereabouts on where we are in terms of progress on that uh, so we go to to here the D3D is the main development page on a 3D printer so uh, let me uh, zoom out there but if you look at the dates we're at so last week Feb february 20 was work on the controller i think we got quite a bit of it done like the design is i mean i think it's decent and uh cedric worked on that with me here's some of the some of the product there um so that and i'll go over that a little bit more but that's looking reasonably well but to get a bigger overview of that february 27 controller and electronics um, software we didn't work on a software wiring we did work on that quite a bit um, so the next next thing in line is February 27 I have the heated bed uh, but what I would say is uh, right here at home what I will do is put together the frame I've got the electronics things like um, I've got the ramps but but I think we want to go with uh, we were looking at the what do you call it the the Rambo board but that's since that's like 80 or 120 bucks I think we go with a cheap you know $20 ramps which then every one of us can prototype and still we can kind of uh, design a general design it generally so with all our wiring which is actually a big deal in this whole thing how to make it simplify the wiring uh, I think we can coordinate between Rambo compatibility ramps compatibility and then our own controller but for now because ramps is widely available we can just roll forward with that uh, what I'd like to see is uh, oh, sorry this thing is um, I mean zoom out a little bit here um, April 22nd is the event which means that all the publicity has to be out pretty much a month before that meaning March 20 which is that Monday by that Monday Pretty much we have to have the PR already out, which means that we've got February 27, March 6, March 13. Those are all Mondays, those weeks to work on if we want to succeed for April 22nd. So basically what I'm seeing is uh, this week put together the entire machine um, and run it. And then next week we're focusing on running it, showing some really nice prints, taking some video. So that by March 20, we are rolling with, with decent publicity where we can show, okay, here's the thing, here's how it works, here's the beauty of it. And I think the main thing we have to pitch here is the modularity concept about the, one is the, the universal axis, and two is some of the magnetic attachments which allow you to modify this structure very easily, including the wiring, which is very, very much turnkey. So let's go into the wiring um, a little bit. But before we go there, I want to just check in, what's the status... Emmanuel on the frame itself there uh, how far did we get on that so uh, can you pipe in on that fill us in can you speak up we can't hear you you might be muted Emmanuel are you there Emmanuel, can you hear us? Uh, if we cannot hear, uh, the first thing I would do is uh, go to his log. So on my log, I have a link to his log. Let's see, so what's the latest? So we've got fixed the holes, blah, blah, blah. Updated universal carriage side. Okay, so definite, uh, there's a bunch of work that's happened we've got a lot of the individual components the idea was there um, 
let's look at this this is the complete frame here if we download that you can you can down okay let me share my screen what I'm doing but it's um, on Emmanuel's log if you go to uh, if I share my screen here uh, that's his log I'm downloading the FreeCAD file here and I'm gonna open that but that's that's Emmanuel's log and what I'm seeing here is the top frame is coming together there's parts like the universal carriages and so forth um, left axis but yes yeah, so I'm seeing the the axis elements are in progress but the complete FreeCAD is not done yet but let's let's see for example in FreeCAD the frame here if we double click on that let's see what comes up um, okay so frames in progress uh, Emmanuel can you uh, fill us in on the latest okay I can't hear you if you're talking we can't hear you you cut out on us yeah okay so in the meantime you can see the the frame I mean it's kinda nice that we um, we're actually collaborating on this so if you you know so okay let's see the frame look at that yeah so can that's you the, hear me now? yeah can hear you now okay fill us in on the yeah. so I'm just showing the frame on uh, the latest on that um, fill us in please okay I have Problems with the uh, free card. Uh -huh. uh, the assembly workbench yep. is in the web, so if it has bugs, it doesn't yep. work good. Yep. So that delays the project, the process a lot to put everything yep. together. Yep. Um, sometimes it works, it, it works, and then if I, if I have to, to move something inside the assembly, then it will not work. It's so I don't know, it doesn't work good. So the work around on that is to move everything together through the draft workbench. Yeah. It's more time, but yeah, I don't. So far, I don't know the draft workbench, so I will spend some time learning that now. Because there is no other way to move stuff. It's the other way. Just put the coordinates is not. Well, nice okay. So I, here's one. what I I can tell you. What I do know, the proper workflow for FreeCAD should be that just as we're doing right now, we are making individual parts and then putting them into one file right but whether you're yes. making okay so listen right. to this so whether you're making the parts or the complete file the thing that does work well at least on my version is that um, you can snap to corners and kind of like we did with a cube building the cube exercise uh, that's worked well for me to to assemble parts and if that's the only tool we have yeah yeah, the problem is if the, the the algorithm that solves the constraints, if you put more than two uh, assembly constraints, it cannot solve them. So, for example, if you want to put the motor on the on the axis, you can you have to put two constraints: one on the you know the plane and one on the hole. You cannot put them. So right now the current development of FreeCAD, you cannot work with two assemblies. It's it has so many problems. Anyway, the the file I have uh, I have uploaded mm -hmm. it has some parts. It's almost yeah. It shows some parts together, but it's not an easy way to work. Yeah. So so that's yeah. So what we're hearing is because the assembly is not in good enough shape, you can't properly constrain things and actually expect it to work. And yeah, I've seen that there's bugs in it but the only thing you can do is don't constrain it you just m put those things together yeah. so that they yeah. fit it just takes and that's it lot yeah. Of time. yeah yeah so that's um that's kind of a, an issue but if you if you go to the what what works well is um you go to x y or z you know like whichever plane and then you can align things so you know it's on a face or you know it's on a corner and stuff like that so yeah it might take longer but um it's it's acceptable as a workflow if if there's actually people you know if we have in, enough bodies to do it and we split the task into into many pieces it does work well to to then put them all together into a final assembly at the end of the day okay so we got to keep going on that and um, 
I mean, see see what you you can do on it. And you've been working with Brian. You've been meeting up with him and and things. Maybe you can. Uh... Uh, yeah, I met I met with him once. Uh, but yeah, uh, he he's busy anyway. Right now, he said. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did anything on on weekends. He said he would do some work on weekends. I don't know. Yeah. If he, if uh, he logged in as four hours last week, so I'm not sure. But as far as the, so the, what we were trying to do is, uh, so modules D3D in integration, what we were trying to do basically for everyone's reference is, okay, the frame and everything is made up. We kind of broke it down into about 13 parts and, and we had people um, collaborating on them. But maybe, you know, maybe what would be useful right now uh, so this was Emmanuel, Brian, and, and Cedric. But maybe what we could do is, uh, since there's a bunch of work on the CAD part itself, can we maybe redirect Cedric to to have you work on the CAD for the, the frame? Cedric, you want to pipe in there to us? Uh, I, I lost you. Yeah. Um, I'm asking if Cedric... Let's see. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go low bandwidth. Low bandwidth here. But uh, Cedric, can you hear us? And can you can you speak up? Um, Hello. Yeah. Hello? Okay. So. Hello? Yeah. So have you seen the page? So let me put in the page called D3D integration. I want to ask you if you can. Um, so there's that page. If you see in the in the link chat box um, yeah uh, yeah yes, I've, I have, uh, yep yep you know that page so can we get you maybe to help out since uh, we're we need the cat I mean the cat is an important asset one for design and two for the publicity because once we get the full cat we can animate it and render it and stuff like that so uh, <clears throat> Can you? Uh, how, how are you going to animate? Uh, I mean, you could do Blender. Uh, There's a, so within FreeCAD you have exploded part animations, but in order to do anim proper animations like renderings, you can export that to Blender. Uh, but the very useful thing is, and and I don't personally know how to do this yet, as far as the exploded part animations. But that's a there's a workbench, exploded part animations workbench that works well within FreeCAD right now. So that's that would be a useful thing. But the first thing is to generate the entire file. Um, um, I'm just asking if, uh, if we put the things together without assemblies, just you know, by coordination, if yeah. the exploded part uh, will work. That's a good question. question. But the, so that's why the workflow, like if we have those 13 pieces as individual parts, um, well, if those are, yeah, I don't know how it works, but as long as we keep the individual files for everything, then we can probably rework it to, to make it work. And I and as you see, we're exploring that. We haven't done that yet, so we don't have that workflow down yet, but uh, we'll, we'll see when we get to it. Um, so in the meantime, so Emmanuel, so do you think uh, Cedric could help out on that? C can you guys work together? Uh, yeah, help would be great. Uh, I... I don't, I don't understand very well. So you want me to do the thing that my name is on? Yeah, I mean, I, I to... right. So I put put names there kind of ra randomly because uh, I didn't know who was doing what. But the idea is if you go into the document, so click edit on that page, and maybe we can right now, all of us, that document should be open. Uh, let me see if it's open for edit. It should be open for editing so that you can move. Maybe we can coordinate who's doing what on that. That would, that would be useful. Yeah, you can, so you can edit the, this. All the parts that have links are almost ready. They, uh -huh. I have uploaded them. Okay. Except, of course, the overall assembly file. It's a work in process. And, yeah. But yep. what, what it just takes is not done. Yep. So... Uh, where will I find the, 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 the dimensions of uh, this part? Right. Um, you have to assemble... Emmanuel, can you explain that? I, 
I'm sorry, can you re uh, say the question again? Yes, I because uh, by example, my name is on uh, uh, D3 extruder only. So, uh, where can uh, the work? What, what is the work? Uh, because I don't have uh, any the dimension to work for me to do the dimension or the, right. uh, any document on it. Right. So, if we go to the so given that we know that's the extruder we have to identify the one that we've gotten and try to get a get a cad file for it so we go to on a d3d page uh we look at the extruder document uh so if you go to the d3d main page let's see how much documentation we have but we basically selected an easy to source off-the-shelf extruder and then from the documentation of those extruders uh, we can get a we would have to draw up a CAD file so there's probably uh, design drawings on there yes so uh, one, one thing at a time let's so, see uh, okay D3D or if yes I'm thinking to make the the cut files from the extruder from the beginning. Is that an option to just take the files from the Prusa since they are dated? Uh, yeah, it would be, but but that means we're going with okay. Take a look at um, yeah. There's different ones online that are available. As far as the Prusa goes, yes, yeah, so you can take those files which are. Yeah, so I, if, it's if, a, if, if, if I have someone help with that other part, you know, the, the end stops and the heated bed, mm -hmm. because the main work is almost done, you know, the main axis are done. Yeah. So I can focus on the extruder. And yeah, but I would say since, um, since we don't have experience with the, the Prusa extruder and there might be tricks to get that working, Yes, they do appear to have the right files, but as a matter of priority, we should just max out on a cheapo extruder off the shelf because we, we have very limited time right now. So I would just draw up the the one that we're getting off the shelf. Yeah? Can you do that? Okay. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. So and then I'm after that... You know, in the weeks after we've got it, you know, we've got say we've got four weeks to the event, and you know, we we continue developing, then we can go to the next extruder. Um, if once we get this all working and we feel like, hey, we gotta now go to polycarbonate, and this extruder won't do it, okay, we're gonna upgrade then and so forth. But for now, let's do the simplest, lowest hanging fruit. Um, and as far as the heated bed, we haven't talked about which heated bed to source, but we want. Uh, the the current concept is get the aluminum heated bed so that the probe the height probe can detect the bed so select the um, go online and search for the aluminum heated bed it's got the aluminum surface and a heater built into it already so in fact um, do you remember the posting on Prusa cloned they had the part list for all those things there so a useful thing to yeah. do yeah Cedric you know what I'm talking about okay network that open source ecology org on the development group there uh, there was a link to the um, yeah there was a yeah yeah, take a look at this link here. Yeah, so it's in, yeah, there it is. Uh, but that link shows you all the parts that they use. So, so find, identify, and source that part. And from the data that's available on that part, we have to draw it up. And if you don't know some specific dimensions, I mean, pretty much it's uh, going to be a flat sheet. And... The thing we have to consider is if it's a it's, if it's an aluminum plastic sheet, we have to mount it to our Z axis. Uh, mount it to the Z axis, and since um, 
So we would have to design some kind of a mechanical uh, connector to the Z axis. Now the Z axis, um, what do we know about the Z axis? We do know that our axes can connect to each other at 90 degrees. So if you use the Z axis, you can, you can put another one of our carriage pieces that are at a 90 degree angle. And then we'd have to attach the bed to that. Um, could be as simple as a single hole through the aluminum bed, but that aluminum bed has got the heater on it, so we can't do that. It would have to be a some kind of a mechanical connection, some kind of a clamping or something. So um, I don't know if you, I mean, we have to basically say, okay, what's the simplest possible way to clamp it down, to attach it to, I mean, for now you can fake it and you can say, okay, we've got just uh, get the bed, Step number one. Step number two is going to be the connection of the bed to the z-axis. But for now in a CAD, you can just fake it by saying, okay, I'm just putting the bed on top of the axis. Um, so that's that's what we want to do for now. Uh, aluminum bed with a built-in heater. Because you want aluminum because the then the height probe can detect it and you can go from there. So Will the bed be adjustable? Well, the, what's adjustable is the fact that the probe senses the position of it, so you have automatic correction. So no, you don't need need you don't need adjustment. So, therefore, the attachment uh, could be very simple. We don't okay. We don't need adjustment for the head, no. But what about the tilt? If it's not no, not, that's not looking like angry. Well, that's the point of the height probe. The height probe is going to follow the um, the slope of whatever you're printing on. Now, it can't be like bent 90 degrees or 45 degrees. I mean, just it'll be relatively straight, but any of that deviation is fine for the probe to correct that. Right? So Does that make it, sense? The bed is bending because it, it will hold from only one side, correct? Okay. Well, I mean, it, will be, it won't bend because it's solid, but it can slope. Yeah, it can slope. Yeah, yeah, if it slopes. Yeah, it will, if it... Yeah, if the bed slopes, you know, if however much it slopes, the the Z probe which finds the the height of the bed over the entire bed, we we will do something like a nine point probing, so so touch detect the bed at nine points and just correct the uh, print for that. So that's I mean that's the beauty of it. You don't have to mess with it. You just put it on and it works. Now that's where the electronics now come in and where we have to get that working. So, yeah. So yeah. Is there a software about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all that software is open source. The probe is now industry standard for the RepRap project, and they have software for it. And last time we started doing that, but we didn't get it to work for some reason, simply because we didn't have enough time. But now we have, you know, we have a week or two to get this to work and and show beautiful results right now. So we're pretty good. Um, so can we just put the, the, the another? axis uh, in right angle and put some two roads uh, to show the bed well okay on. okay so let's let's discuss that yeah i mean that's exactly what we're doing the z axis is just uh, one of our universal axes in a z direction that's all it is, is that, does that answer your question yeah. yeah yeah i mean if you look at okay so let me go back to um okay let me go back to the document and share my screen again um Let me just share my screen and show you. I mean, th I mean that's the whole beauty of this project. We've got a universal axis that does X, Y, and Z. So if you look at this here, so that's how the 3D printer is going to look. Um, it's going to look like this, except the motors. You want to put the motors at the back. Why? Because as you, if this motor is here, it can they can possibly have a conflict. And you don't want to run wires to motors. Just keep it at the back because the controller is going to be towards the back. So no need to put the motors here. Put them in the back as far as the Y, Y. So the Y is going into the page. The X is the main axis with the extruder. The Z is the vertical one. Does that make sense? So the Z, all it is is the same axis with your... Um, with your carriage and to the carriage is another 
universal axis printed piece which is at 90 degree angle so it's basically like a little let me draw this here um, so there's a so there's a little um, if you see what I'm drawing there there's that carriage piece that we that's already at 90 degrees to the to the yeah see that piece there yeah there's already a platform there and to that you have to attach the bed and the bed is only eight inches so and that piece is two inches so it's holding it two or three inches so it's holding it like three inches how, how long is the bed it's it, standard is eight by eight inches and so look at the link of the uh, you have to take a look at the link yeah. and the exact picture so so it's very easy that's the point it's I mean it's really trivial um, I mean that's 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 the beauty of this as I'm saying it's this universal system and now if you have a larger bed I mean you want to put an axis on, on one side and the other side but for eight inches you can just suspend it and let it let it um, hang off one side it's I mean eight inches is fine for that um, and that's what, for example, Ultimaker does. And for example, Ultimaker, they have a connection just like this. They attach the axis at one point. Um, so that's that's that. So does that that answer all the questions? Um, but how uh, how would attach it? Okay, the carriage is under yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, the um, easiest way to attach it is okay. The carriage is in there. The carriage. Um, Okay, let me start. Uh, put in a new. Well, I can make the five, the cut five for now, and we can figure it out later. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, let's draw that out. It's very simple. I mean, it's extremely simple. Let's let's start a new slide here. Man, my computer bogged down so slow. Um. Slide, duplicate slide. Sorry, it's like so slow right now. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, Cedric, does that make sense what to do? Like D3D, X axis? I mean, we're doing the look there's the x-axis the y-axis the y-axis the z-axis each axis is made of the of three printed pieces and then there's a whole bunch of other pieces like you see on the universal axis page the point is that we put all of those into individual files we make specifically we make 13 files and once we have those 13 files they should be sufficient that you put together the entire printer with them so that's that's all that is but each file has to be each part the y y z and x those are all individual ones they they're all different in some way so they have to be drawn up individually so that someone has to do that work um, but you can all, definitely you know if you're doing um, you know one axis like the z axis just copy the x axis and turn it 90 degrees you know start with that and then modify it as needed so you're building upon the the prior work uh, okay uh, Z axis and the Y, the two Y axis are done. Uh, so, yeah. okay. The, the X axis needs, needs to be done. Okay. And that's got the, yeah. Yeah. So, so just to show you what the Z axis looks like from the side. Um, so you got. Well, I think I, I can work with this. The x-axis since I, I can make it work with the assembly kind of here's and the if, if you can work with a heated bed so yeah so here's what the heated bed is this is all it is it's this is your middle carriage on the z-axis here's the other part of the z-axis 
And here's the other part of the z-axis on the bottom. Uh, does that make sense? It's just this this piece is bolted to that piece. Those are bolted together. Now we don't know how to connect that together. I mean, one way you can do it is you can put magnets on the bottom of each and yeah, you can put magnets on the bottom of the heated bed. That would work. I mean, each of those magnets, so put all the magnets here on this end and each of them has eight pounds of pulling force. That would be, but you have to glue the magnet to the aluminum because aluminum won't stick to the magnet. So you can do this, you can do this little thing and put little magnets underneath that are glued. So already you know that our axes have places for magnets, so you use those magnets there and then glue one onto the bed. That would be the simplest way to do it. That's the beauty here. So you can do that and, you know, and accordingly, you know, put your other magnet, you know, whatever you got. Does that make sense? So whoever's doing that, but you know, that'll be, those are just magnets right there. The little super magnets that would hold it. And then you have, I mean, that is really cool because it's, you know, it's so modular. You can modify this in a second. So any questions? So can you guys work on that? Uh, but I mean, the start would be, let's, let's get some, okay. So we're going to, we want to put Cedric. So what, what are you going to do? You're going to do, uh, okay. So, so let's put some names. So heated bed. Uh, what else? Let's start with that. I mean, start with that. But what what do you think could be next? Um, I mean the Z. Emmanuel, you want to do the Z axis or what? What's what's your deal? I think. Yeah. You, but you got yeah, a lot of finishing. The Z axis is almost done. It's almost done. Okay. Almost, oh. yeah, just a little, a few details. I, I, I insist to work on the axis because okay. uh, I, I found a way to put the bolts and the nuts that stuff really fast. Ah, okay. Right. And remember that there's two versions, right? So one is simple without the bolts and the second one is yeah. complex. So, yeah, check the files. Uh, yeah. Already uploaded. Yeah, yeah. So, so Cedric, you know you can download Emmanuel's files, right? Yes. Right. So if we have um, Lego log, uh, that's your log there. Okay, so let's put some links up on the top of your log. For example, um, Emmanuel log. There's a manual log and then timesheet, for example, um, marching log. Jonathan, what you you up to doing something? We can work on the wiring or you you yeah, getting? I'm, you, you, I'm updating the log right now in terms of uh, I'm gonna print and assemble all my axes. I'm ordering order for most of my parts. I'm gonna have to find some other parts to order, but oh, I'm nice. getting my frame cut this week. Oh and wow. Then, uh, Okay, let's add Jonathan Log. Um, oh, I have a problem with, uh, with assembly of the uh, axis. Um, We're updating the same page right now. Marcin, I, yep. I see the universal CNC axis page. And uh, you, have, uh, you have some uh, washers. Uh, that, that, that do not fit on the horse. Um, in the universal axis? So, yeah, where, where is the fate? Um, yeah, on the universal CNC axis fate, where yep. you have, uh, you know, a nice breakdown of, uh, of everything. Yep. Uh, so, on, on the carriage, you see, on the, let's say the... Uh, which, the idler carriage. Yeah. You have M6 at the bottom. Don't. But um, do you want the nuts? The the washers. Sorry. Do you, do you want them? Oh, are you saying the the washers don't fit? 
Oh, I guess not, yeah. right? They wouldn't fit because that's inside the hole. That's right. what you're saying? So I, I do you need them? Um, no, no. Do you need washes? No, I see what you, I see oh, your point the because problem. they don't, just don't fit in the holes because these holes are hexagonal, right? Yeah, the, the holes are perfect for the nut. Right. So where do you go, man? That's that's pump that's pump that's pump it 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 a bug report. So have you ever done that? Bug report. Clearly on a wiki, right? <laughs> Let's see if we if it gets us. Hello. No, it doesn't get us. It's uh, it's called feedback. Um, no, on bug report. Okay, bug report. We redirect it to feedback. Yes, yeah, Cedric, are you? I, put the, I know that problem on the okay on the doc document. Where do you want me to report the bugs? Yeah, I'm putting it right now. So number redirect. I'm redirecting it to the feedback. There's a page called feedback. And that's for all bug reports and everything. Uh, so we should we should use that. It's kind of a lowbrow thing, but we can we can use that page. Put it, I mean in immediate sense you can put it right under the, the picture. Just edit it and say, hey, those those washers there don't belong. Review. It's yeah. It's, it's page is called review. So so D3D suggestion is wash M6 washers on the bottom don't fit on carriage uh, carriages. So how do they fit in a in a 3D image there? Let's see. I guess it got faked, right? Um, okay, okay, no, good point, good point. So that's why we're doing this, refining that. Jonathan, do you have your, uh, I don't see, February 22nd is the last thing on your, you don't have any notes on, on the D 3D printer on your log? Uh, I just updated this just now. Okay. I'm updating it as we speak. Okay. So refresh, it should be there. Yep. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's just look at, um, just finalize this this page here. So D3D extruder only. So basically, for all these parts, um, with a caveat on the extruder, we're not using the one from the Prusa original. We're just using a simple one. But that should be use a simple one that's documented on the extruder page. So that's that. So Cedric, maybe we can have you do the x-axis. Simple and and complicated. Yeah. Start with the heated bed. I, I mean, it's a, I the axis. yeah. I mean, basically the idea is any length that there is here, like whatever is not linked, do it. If you're capable, and um, uh, there's something that I haven't understood very well and understood. Uh huh. The, 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 uh, the difference about uh, the axis and simple um, axis simple. Yeah, all that I means. I haven't understood this one very well. Yeah, the simple means that you're uh, excluding the bolts and fasteners because they take they can take a lot of memory if they're actually the full complete fasteners so draw it up with all the parts minus the bolts and nuts let, let me do the okay. axis i can do that yeah yeah but basically start on a heated bed get your get your feet wet on that and um uh, yeah if, if, he, if he's done with that then the extruder yeah i don't want to that. If you can work on the extruder, that will be very helpful, and I can finish the whole axis. Well, the yeah. extruder is a lot of work there in the sense that you you have to take the file find. Okay, let's make sure we find that. So, 
So D3D extruder document. We should have a link there to the part that we're actually going to get. So look at that part and draw it up the best you can. Find all the data you can on the internet. Uh, so let's see how much... X extruder Was it, did you want the beds in the cat file do i want the bed from the cat file the, the belts belts the yeah oh i mean it would be nice if you could do them i mean they're kind of complicated right but we should have something okay i can't do that uh, i will leave it for later but yeah I mean, we got to do something. Okay, let's see. Do we have a link? I don't see a nice link to a really good one. Um, let's see. A 3D review, parts, versus choice forum. And then stops. Are they seen? Oh, uh, yeah. So that was your department. Were you going to do that to... Like, uh, basically, it's a bunch of holes on the... Basically, it's modified carriage pieces, right? I mean, end stuffs we were talking about, you just screw them into the end, to the carriages, right? Uh, yeah, this is what we said, but is that... My... That they are just... Switches, but if, if we use the, the, the board... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does the board provide anything else? Maybe maybe it smooths the electronics. So the board is there for mount. No, you don't need the. I don't think you need it. No, I mean, what's the question? The question is, the board uh, for the switch. Yeah. Does, the, that, does that board provide any, any other No, that's that's thing. built into the controller. Like that was used like that. No, either could work, but let's go the simpler route, route with less parts. There's no need to have... Something, maybe does the electronic signal more smooth? I don't know. No. Makes sense. I don't think so. If Prue says... Like, I mean, there's printers okay. that don't do that and... If we get into trouble later, we can uh, do it. But okay, let me show you um, my eBay, the extruder that we got before. Let's get a link to the specific one that we got. Um, Two hundred two thousand sixteen. Let's see if I find this extruder. There it is. It's this thing. So Something like when, that. Uh, when each of us will do the, 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 uh, the part, um, at the end we export, as I can see, we, we upload it on the wiki. Yeah. Uh, how we will do the assembly at the end? Uh, well, we just import the files into into FreeCAD one uh, after another. Each of, each of, of us will do the assembly or there will be another task for assembly, for assembly. Yeah, but that's the only... If you try to do that all in one file, you um, that workflow is takes much longer time cause it, because it does. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much simpler to do the individual parts and then you import them into one document that's that's the easy way otherwise the files get hard to work with and if you have bugs then 
you're you can be losing a lot of work you know yes okay so here's a link to the specific use that one I put it in the in the chat box but um, so here I'm, I'm putting this in a d3d extruder so so BOM uh, I'm gonna put BOM here on the very top and use this extruder that's the one we got before that's simple off the shelf it's, it's 30 bucks for everything Does that make sense? Can you see that? So I put it on the extruder page, D3D extruder page. At the very top, it says use so this extruder. So we're going with that extruder? Yeah, it's the easy easy thing to do. Now, you see the, the Prusa original. We can do that, but not in the next two weeks. That's a great upgrade. I think okay. it's also good to do like the super basic minimum system that you know, is super highly replicable, you know. So guys, I mean, uh, for December, I'd like to <clears throat> have an event, a ra radically large event w where we build a hundred printers in a single day. So, so let me just wrap up with the wiring. So the wiring, just to update you on this, I'm working on this, but um, you have to make the wiring extremely simple and Cedric has worked on this a little bit, but the idea is we simplify it radically instead of using set six wires for like for example for all the sensors if we use a cat5 cable we we can run one wire from the controller for all the sensors you see that so that's what we're doing therefore like when you're wiring this up you're reducing the wiring time from minutes to seconds so if it's going to take you 30 minutes to do the wiring or an hour well, it'll only take you just six, you know, 30 to 60 seconds if you do this because it's just plug and play. You use these couplers, the splitters, and one Cat8 wire, and you can connect six, there's six sensors, three end stops, two thermistors, and one height probe. So that's the height probe. Um, height probe here, thermistor, another thermistor, and these are end stops, Y, Z, and X end stops. And so you take in one wire out of the controller. Super simple. So that's part of the electronics. Now, so if you if so you the include splitter is there, the splitters there to, is to share common. Uh, the splitters are used so that uh, here's the deal: every device gets a Cat5 wire. The wiring goes into this step. And therefore, when you make the connections with unions or splitters, you use standard Cat6, Cat5 cable. In other words, the wiring is already determined by the plug you have on the device. So you have to wire, like for example, the stepper motor, you have to wire it a particular way. If it's, for example, the X stepper, you have to wire it to the plug, you know, if it's, the, say, the two Y steppers, you have to wire them a certain way. And then, now does that make sense? But the idea is, Jonathan, right. did that yeah, answer your question? The question was the splitter was, I mean, is that to limit some of the wiring? Splitter is such that you have an absolutely modular system. If you want to make this thing 10 times bigger, you just dis disconnect this wire and plug in a 10 times longer wire. You know? So, okay. so for, the for the scalability. Guys, scalability guys. and modularity. And rapid build. Those oh. are the three reasons. Rapid build, yeah, scalability, yeah. modularity is part of the rapid build. But this way you can reconfigure this to any device. And then if we go to the open source, this is just using the ramps here. But if we go to other machines, you can, you, you have absolute plug and play. So the wires are plug and play. What I was thinking, actually mount the splitters on magnets on the frame. The frame is metal. Just attach them using magnets. Just glue a magnet to the splitter, and then uh, attach it to the frame. And there you go. You don't have to worry ab without about any like cable ties. I mean, the wiring takes. You know, what did it take us? Uh, we have data from last time, but I think the wiring took us like an hour last time. Oh, uh, it's definitely antiquated. I mean, it's I mean, just the, uh, Cat5 is definitely the way to go. I mean, yeah, yeah, this is good. Cat5 is yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. So everything is. Yeah. So you got one one for all the sensors. Now, when you put it all together, you know, it does kind of get complicated. But you only have like four Cat fives coming out of the controller. Like once you include all the steppers, and the heat bed and everything, it gets a little more complicated. But once again, relatively simple. Like one wire goes to the entire extruder, and it splits into three items: the extruder, the fan, and the heater. And then the steppers, each each Cat5 carries two signal for two um, power for two steppers. So one one wire does two motors. Like for example, this w Y right here, one wire splits into Y1 and Y2. You know things like that. So it's super simple, um, modular. So that's the deal, and that's why I, I kind of I'm ready to build this. Basically, crimp some connectors and build this because this is uh, I have all the parts here pretty much. I've got. Uh, I can pretty much build this. So my goal is to build this completely this week and have the probe up and running um, with the Z-axis probe. I, I just need to get a uh, heated bed. That's the only part that's missing. I can use a I can use a regular bed platform that's not heated right now. In fact, I can, you know, I mean, the absolute minimum minimum viable product is an unheated bed. So you can only do PLA because you can do unheated with PLA, right? So we can do even that if we, you know for prototyping but I think we should do the bed right now so we can uh, we can do that but it would be even acceptable without a heated bed so we would avoid this uh, this wire here but I'm gonna put this all together so why don't you guys keep working on a, on a frame and see how far we can go but I mean that's that's pretty good I'm kinda encouraged by this and that yeah, very modular, very, very very flexible system. So let's see how it looks in, in real life, and then this week put it together, take some videos next week, and um, get some publicity out, I think. So this this would be pretty good. Um, so any other questions or anything? Um, yeah, you say the motors go on the back. So yeah, it will be better. So that the wiring is shorter. If you put them in the back, the wiring is going to be shorter because you don't have to carry another wire to the front. The wires are, see this Y wire, it just goes to the back. Like, say the controller is right there, then you're just sending in the, you know, you don't have to go up to the front and then all the way around and to the so front. The metal frame? Yeah. Uh, I think the controller might be, we can possibly put it, it's the closest if you put it behind the machine because it's closest to everything. Not on the side, but right at the back, and attach it. So the controller, we can. I mean, I'm thinking, use the magnets. Just glue on some magnets and attach the controller to the frame. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking oh. magnets for everything. We got a metal frame. We should use it. Nobody has a metal frame. Everyone uses aluminum, even the lulz bud. That's not magnetic. But we have this unique opportunity, and it really works well. I mean, the magnets. We've used those on the sensors for the brick press before. They work well to attach things. Um, but metal and magnets are a good combination and nobody that I know of in the 3D printer world does that because nobody uses a metal frame they, if they do use metal they use aluminum but with this frame if, if this 10 gauge I mean you can have a tractor drive on top of it and it will hold I mean it will hold thousands of pounds a 10 gauge once you put it into a frame configuration that, that's going to hold thousands of pounds it's very going to be very strong so one of the things you can do is you can stack these things vertically for your print farm you know, if you want to do a print farm, you can just stack them one on, stack these printers one on top of each other, right? Well, there's going to be wire feed issues, like uh, feed the uh, the spool feed. You have to address that, but in principle, you can stack these things up um, one on top of each other. But, um, so not the, the assembly question. You yeah. see the motor go in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that you are going to make holes on the metal frame? Don't need to. If we're attaching magnetically, then we don't need to. If we if we find that there's not enough hold, we could do that. No, no, but how it's going to go on the back since... Oh, the whole assembly go behind the frame. Uh, this frame is drawn in accurately. The, the, the back of this should be... The cube that you already drew. You drew the correct frame. Just fit everything in there. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, um, no. No? no, no the, the, the whole axis go inside the frame, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The axis is just the frame. The frame sits on the inside. I mean, we could also put it outside, but that would be a different, you know, we can experiment with that to get more area out of the same machine, but you have to mount the other axes differently. Like you can put the one, the Y, Y, you can put it on the outside, but then you have to attach the X in some way. Yeah, yeah. No, know I'm, what I'm, asking, mean? I'm trying to figure out if, what do you mean by the, the motor goes yeah. uh, the back? <laughs> what, the, what do I mean? Axis, to the frame yeah 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 look uh you take that motor is not there that's the idler side the motor goes on that that should ah, be, that should be the okay. idle okay. that's what i mean i mean the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you, no, you see that okay so i guess okay yeah. The x -axis. yeah that's it okay yeah um good. yeah that's good um Cedric, any questions on your side? Mm, uh, I, no, no. So, so, uh, if I understood uh, very well, uh, I will, the next work for me is to do the parts in three cards. Yeah. The parts that my name is on. Um. And, and that's what. Yeah. Uh, extruder. And I, I will try to find, uh, like, by example, to find the, 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 the by example, to, to produce this extruder by the thing that you have uh, showed me the, on eBay. Yeah. And I will. Yeah, draw it up as accurately as you can. Like, try to find the dimensions of everything. I mean, you can kind of yes. search. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, what you should do is you should start by creating an individual file for each piece. So that if there's any questions, like, it's much... The workflow works well when you create individual files for each piece because then you modify the piece without having to modify the entire file. And then... Uh, so yes, and then you put them together into one file at the end. When you say piece, you, you yeah. say piece of like for the part. The, by example, uh, the extruder yeah. have many pieces. Yes, exactly. So I will do. Uh, I will, if the extruder have, by example, uh, ten pieces, I will yes. do uh, ten files. Yeah. And yeah, after yeah. I will do the same of these ten files. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Can you see this this link? Uh, where did you put it in? Let's see. On the chat, right? Where, yeah. where I sent the link. On the chat. Yeah. Look at that. Just grab that. Okay. But, but, I mean, if it's a step, yeah, I mean, that's decent, right? So, yeah, you can start from that. Uh, SDM, I think, so you have to make it solid. Yes, that's the problem, right? So, and then it's a little different than what we have, right? Because it's not exactly the same thing. So you have to modify it. Like, look at the back. I mean, the, the fan is not like that, right? So, yeah, I mean, the thing is you kind of have to... You can use it as the first approximation, but then we should get a... We should get a better, more exact yeah. file. And if it's um, excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, it's just a, a question. Um, yeah. Why why do you need to do all uh, all three D printer cut file? Is it for reproducing it? Or there are or many. Or you're asking what's the reason for producing the complete file? Yeah, the, the complete. Uh, also, the, the, the parts that uh, will be bought uh, to, in shops. So I, I don't understand what well the reason of doing all the parts of the... Of you don't understand the reason why all the parts it's should just, be generated? It's just a question. Yeah, the reason is that 
uh, having a complete CAD file is very central to the development process because then yes. first you know exactly what you have so you can say to somebody hey uh, five years ago we did this thing and it's exact so you can show it to them you can generate build instructions you can generate exploded part diagrams you can do do renders and animations it's a very central part of everything you can do uh, professional fabrication drawings everything everything comes out of the CAD so it and then if you want to evolve this, so this is version one let's say say if, say if you want to take version two when you do version two when you design that you don't have to start from scratch you can modify the existing file because you've got all the parts so okay. it's very important yeah it's it's critical Or, for example, to do WebGL 3D, 3D embeddable embeds in WebGL, you can generate it out of the CAD file as well. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'm good. I okay, have, you're good. I'm good. You're both good. That's good. <laughs> then I'm good. And I'm going to get and build this 3D printer this week and uh, show you guys some videos. Does that sound like a plan? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's. Uh, can you still hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, that's then that's good. I'll build this thing. Um, my goal is to build this thing, and then go from there. So next week I could show you uh, hopefully a working printer. All right, guys. We should, uh, yeah. we do want to check out, do we want to check in on Friday to see what the progress is? Uh, this Friday? Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, this Friday. Yes, yes. Yes, so let's let's try to check in uh, same time, which is 1 p.m. Well, 11 a.m. on um, Monday and then 1 p.m. on Friday. So if we have some work done... Uh, we can see where we need to go on Friday. Yeah. All right. Mm, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent, guys. So thank you very much then. And uh, kind of a long, slow meeting here. My apologies, but uh, 